New Business Center Vice President, Mr. Samuel Chang. So welcome, Mr. Chang. I think that photo was like seven years ago, right? <laughs> uh, so actually I have a team both in uh, Silicon Valley and Korea, focus on new product development and also partnership. And this is actually our first uh, year as LG Electronics hosting an event, along with our sister company, LG Ventures. And I'm actually from Southeast, so it's actually good to be coming back to the Southern States. Um, and I think a lot of questions that people ask us, what, you know, why is the electronic company you know, there are a company like Sony also hosting as well, but they're you know, a lot of focus on media and entertainment. And as one of the leading companies in physical electronics, we're finding more and more understanding what consumers think about in terms of trend, and also how they really experience and go day to day with technology really becoming critical as we think about new product development and also improve our existing products. So we only want to, you know, in some sense, give you some products we're looking at that's in the pipeline. Also hear feedback from you in terms of what are the things you're seeing in terms of technology and lifestyle change. So I'll go and introduce uh, three other panel speakers who are hosting today. First is uh, Mr. Chali. He spent a lot of time in LG Electronics, heading a lot of design work. Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. The second person is uh, Mr. T.I. Cho, who has our convergence lab under our CTO office. And third person is uh, uh, Mr. Dong Su Lee, he's head of our corporate. Oh, Dong Su Chin, sorry. You know, there are only like three last names in Korea enough to figure it out. I messed that one up. Actually, I, I know Dong Su. He and I also share office in Silicon Valley as well. He heads our corporate venture arm based in Silicon Valley. So. I guess I'll start with uh, Mr. Charlie. Can you share us a little bit in terms of how you think about South by Southwest and your motivation attending here today? Uh, actually, yeah. actually, we are uh, uh, attending many of the so-called trade shows here and there. CS, MWC, and so on. And South by Southwest was kind of the, yeah, somebody was asking to me, well, why you are not joining South by Southwest? And I said that if I go there, uh, it feels like I'm having too much fun. <laughs> it's like a fun place. But uh, normally we, we are showing off the product for sales to the trade show. But what if we are going to share some kind of the innovation idea with the thought leaders yeah. and innovators in South by Southwest? So I decided to bring all those prototypes, not, not the products to scale. So and share our ideas with lots of innovators here. That's why we are here just talk and communicate with the thought leaders and trend leaders here in South by Southwest. And I know there are a lot of products that we're actually showing that's about to launch, and also some product that we're actually not shipping in the U.S. but available in other markets. So can you take some of the interesting products that you worked on and your team? Okay, well actually, uh, sorry, Sam and I, uh, same team, but uh, in, in Korea, like a uh, styler, which is stream, steam refreshener for the garment, it's popular in Korea, and uh, I think it will be coming to the US. Some, actually, it is already. And we have done like a home group, beer maker, that uh, we spent like a two or three years' time uh, invested there. So we, we are uh, actually, there are many products I'm not allowed to talk about, but uh, many of the innovations are coming on this market as well. And we even developed, initiated the the skincare product, the anti-aging electronics product in Korea, is fabulous in Korea. After a certain period of time, after we finish the test, we will bring it into the U.S. market as well. Yeah, actually, one of the products that's going to be available in Korea is uh, a beer maker. And we will actually get the sample after this session. So hold on for another maybe 15, 20 minutes. And yeah, there's actually a product we've been shipping in Korea called Cryo. It's a beauty product that uh, improves your skin texture 
and also make it look younger. So it's one of the things when you have to watch key drama, something to think about. <laughs> I'm going to switch to uh, Mr. Chia Cho. Uh, you know, I, I know you've been among all of us since doing the Belgian Electronic. Can you tell me in terms of two technologies? Sorry. What technology do you see an impact as you look at the next, you know, five, ten years out? Uh, before start, uh, please understand my uh, poor English. This is the first time to intervene. Uh, in English. Uh, and LG, uh, artificial intelligence is the key technology we think, and AI capabilities will evolve through learning over time. And true intelligence will provide for the more comfortable and more seamless way for the connectivity among the all home entertainment devices and appliances and even more out of mobile products. And uh, to the AI capability is so important, so we classify these uh, AI capabilities by four profiles. First one is an uh, expert, and uh, tailor, butler, and partner. And each profile will evolve from the novice level to the advanced level, I think. Thank you. Uh, maybe I'll move on to uh, Mr. Kim. <laughs> All right. I know that a corporate venture got set up, I think, sometime uh, mid last year. So, can you share us a little bit in terms of you know, the vision as you see for the venture? Sure. So, uh, briefly, uh, LG Pinkland Ventures started uh, uh, May 1st of last year. Uh, uh, really, it was a vision from LG to do uh, corporate venture capital the right way. Uh, Right now we're set up, uh, we are managing over $400 million. We're headquartered in Silicon Valley. Uh, we can invest anywhere in the world though. And uh, uh, we invest in, in all areas of technology that LG is invest, uh, interested in, not just uh, you know LG electronics related technologies like AI and robots, but also things related with lithium-ion batteries and, and materials and, and devices as well as so, uh, uh, and um, yeah, we uh, obviously we try to promote uh, a win-win relationship between the startups and LG. Try to uh, try to connect them with the right people with LG. Help them with not just the investment, but also on uh, setting up strategic uh, collaborations with different LG business units in our business. Uh, maybe to extend that a little bit, what do you think are some of the benefits, there are a lot of startups I think both looking uh, to show off their new product or technology at the event when they work with someone like LG Ventures. Sure, so I think uh, uh, right now the trend definitely is uh, for some of, some of the technology areas, there's definitely a, a benefit for a, 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 a startup to partner with a bigger company like LG. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, the LG could provide the scale and needed the marketing power and, and, and just working together uh, to create synergies. But the, the most difficult part that, that I constantly hear from different startups is, who do I go to? I mean, I, I want to work with LG, but it's such a big company and headquartered in Korea. Uh, and, and this is quite a bit of a challenge. A lot of times, startups approach somebody, it might not be the right people and then they may not be interested in what, what, the, what the startup is doing, and then the, and the startup thinks, oh no, LG is not interested. But, but that's not necessarily true. There, are, there could be other people within LG who really wants to work with a startup like yours. So, because LG Technology Ventures, we, you know, we are here in the US, but also we have a, a, a team of uh, what we call an internal business development uh, team guys who, who have worked with open innovation centers within LG for a long time, so they know who would be interested in that particular uh, technology that, that, that a startup might be working on. So they can make the right connection, put it in front of the right people, sometimes provide advice on, on how to talk to uh, different uh, people within LG and so forth. And, and, and really, at the end of the day, we're just trying to, to help the company uh, do business with LG. And, and obviously, an investment can really also help the company with the resources that is needed to support a relationship with with uh, with a big company like LG, so I think it's uh, really a mutually beneficial relationship uh, for both sides, and everybody's trying to promote. 
so we're showcasing a lot of product ranging from robots to beer maker as well as mobile TV. From Kumsu, your perspective, if you had to pick, let's say, three key focus areas for technology, should you think about investment? What would that those three be? Uh, I think, again, it's a term that is used a lot, but smart home is really uh, in, a, in a stage to pick up. Now, uh, there's definitely the, the, uh, all the appliances is going to be connected with the internet. Uh, the, I mean, now almost every home has, has Wi-Fi with 5G coming up, and also with AI to help uh, these appliances to uh, to manage the data that is collecting more intelligently to provide different service. Uh, I think that the potential is just huge. Uh, where this, where different uh, startups can help is that they might have so LG builds a platform. All these startups might have all these innovative ideas to how to leverage their platform to create services that, that is very uh, differentiated. So I think that's uh, an area that, I, that I'm really keen on that, that I'm, I'm trying to invest more. Then you also switch back to Charlie. Um, I know we talk a lot about technology, but also user experience and design is also very critical. And I know your team also is working a lot in automotive space. So, do you have any perspective to share in terms of design or user experience in the automotive as we think about technology? In terms of the automotive, we are evolving into the autonomous industry, autonomous vehicle era. And uh, by combining all those communication and UX and the AI technology, we, we hope that we could be leading one of the most important space in the autonomous driving technology. So we are collaborating with the global leaders in many fields, but uh, I can't reveal everything. But uh, for instance, with the TI's help, uh, many of the AI-driven cabin experience will be led by electrons, I can say that. So the, we also have a automotive Bigger platform, but uh, uh, other than that, uh, in terms of the cabin experience, what people want to do in the autonomous vehicle, maybe they want to sleep or they want to chat, they want to see the movie. So it, it, it is like a business class experience in the airplanes. The same experience goes to the, the vehicle, and we are heavily investing in that space. And you see a lot of the uh, concepts and the propositions from LG in the near future in, in that field. So, Okay, I think uh, we have maybe a few more minutes left, so we can open up for any questions. If I can say, uh, feel free to uh, raise your hand. I think the question was what the, you know, from our point of view, what the future of TV means. Actually, he's the input in TV, but uh, yeah, I can answer. The, with the OLED technology and the many of the uh, later technology are evolving into the TV space, and as you see the OLED R there, more of the TV itself it will be like uh, emerging into the space itself. So TV will not merely a product; it will be part of the space. And in, in the in the maybe in the near future we will be proposing lots of the TV which is more integral integral concept with the space like that. So how we are gonna cope with the space as well as the contents. And addition in addition to the, the AI proposition of today, the TV will be evolving into more conversion product with the space and the experience itself. And we definitely think that we'll be the lead in the space. And many people are complaining about the the pricing, but we have uh, like a legacy and a great history of making those accent technology to be more affordable to the people. So, yeah, maybe some of the, the like, uh, early adapters can afford it, but I know that I, I can even, uh, I'm afraid of uh, revealing the, about the price of today at the those kind of TV, but it will be more affordable and we are very good at like a commoditizing uh, those kind of products in the future, but the, definitely it will be more melting into the space and the experience as well. Anything else to add there, uh, to 
Okay, back to 2020 and so things. Uh, then I was in uh, former opening division. At the time, our team is very eagerly developed the uh, 4K UHD TV and OLED TV and uh, smart TV at the same time. And uh, it's immense for the customer viewing experience, directly. And now, uh, for the hardware sales, it's uh, a differentiation important. And for the software and content side, software platform and UX is important. And nowadays, many videos combine to the TV built-in. So there's uh, another new paradigm. Uh, so far, we about six or seven years to integrate many intelligence and the contents, and now around uh, 5 to 10 to 50, now 20% of the videos are combined pretty in the TV. That's the trend. So, you know, I think if you think about it, we're getting so much more content and our ability to do 4K, 8K at home. So I think we're going to get get more of the TV. On the flip side, I think we're also going to get less, just like local TV. People say, I want to experience TV and I watch it. But when I'm not watching it, I want it to disappear. So I think we can get more and less at the same time. Any other questions? Go ahead. So I noticed the BTS, oh, like the little section over there, but I want to know like, what is the future for entertainment that LG, like, LG would do? Is there any more of that going on with like music entertainment? I'm just curious, like, what was the thought process of what do you think innovatively you can do with entertainment wise? Okay. I think the question was, you know, uh, if you. My wife is a big fan of BTS, by the way. So uh, she saw, uh, you know, some uh, materials with BTS. So what do you, what do we think uh, in terms of future of technology and entertainment? Uh, so do you want to take the question? Yeah, actually, that's a question not just for LG, like Chinese, but LG Group. And, and, uh, you may or may not know, but LG uh, has uh, one of the subsidiaries, LG U Plus, which is uh, one of the uh, mobile, uh, top three mobile pair in Korea. They are very aggressively pushing uh, 5G uh, infrastructure in Korea. Actually, probably I would say is more, probably one of the most aggressive in terms of deploying 5G. Uh, so with 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 the new uh, mobile uh, 5G platform and uh, you know all sorts of different content and the phone connected, I think everything has to merge into a single seamless user experience where you're always connected. Uh, you're you're always you know, you, you can have access to any content that you want, anywhere, wherever you are. Uh, and also, not just that, but also the, the, with, with AI, uh, you know, you can seamlessly suggest content that you might want. The, 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 you know, we should be able to somewhat uh, guess what you would probably want at the uh, time of the day or wherever you are, and, and just and just provide things that, that you, you, might, you might want uh, seamlessly. So I think that's where the content is going, uh, entertainment is going, and, and, and I think it, it's going to be a very exciting future uh, for the next 10 years. Yeah, I think that comment about 5G is a really interesting one. About 15 years ago, I actually had a tent to visit Korea as a visitor, and this was when you know they had a gigabit Ethernet long before we were still dealing with the you know dial-up or even just one megabit in the US. And I had a very peculiar experience. I went to visit someone. And this person, I will not disclose who, was doing peer-to-peer down -peer download of a movie. <laughs> and there was two things that was interesting. So it took only about two minutes to download the whole movie. It was a high-speed internet. <coughs> but once it started finished playing, he deleted the movie, which you would never do in the US. <laughs> so I told him, why did you do that? He's like, oh, it's just as easy to download next time. And I think it was like foretold of kind of streaming as we think about it, right? No one downloads Netflix unless you go on an airplane. But now with the 5G, they're really going to drive in terms of how we consume content. So we're really excited, but I think there are a lot of things that we cannot even imagine will happen in the next five, ten years. Any other questions? Go ahead. Speaking of 5G, do you think uh, do you think on planes will we be able to keep our phones on and keep our cellular service going? I think the question was as relate to 5G, will we be able to keep our cell phones on during flight? I can answer that uh, question. Uh, one of the NBC, uh, my mission, our company uh, driving into is that not only the autonomous driving car, we are heavily investing also into the, the air, aircraft carrier space. And we recently uh, launched, a, I don't think that, 
<laughs> well, so we don't know, so I think. Uh, no, there's the news. Okay, there's news covers. So we will be going into the joint venture with the Lufthansa Technique, one of the world leading the aircraft technology company. So we will be going into the aircraft. And you know that we are very good at communicating technology. We will be the one of the very first company who will be launched 5G phones. And, but in, in the airplane, you know, the Wi Fi is the most advanced the, the telecommunication protocol. So we will be like uh, evolving the cabin experience into the future. So some of the connectivity will be there. Now, I'm not sure when the 5G will be coming up, but because 5G antenna and so is pretty big but uh, with the even you you don't have any freedom of the wi-fi and you have to pay a lot of money for that but we'll be evolving those expenses to be more affordable more convenient for faster connection uh, experience in the future and then we are there we are in the uh, aviation and the cabin experience uh, business as well but you will be uh, and you will soon see the what kind of vision we will be projecting to the market? Yeah, so I think we're actually investing both in you know technology in terms of communication and even display as it goes to not only cars but airline cockpits and also passenger space. But I think there's still a lot of things that we can do as an industry, getting the common standard. It's not just 5G in a single market, but airplane turns out goes across borders. And some of the cellular technology will need to be you know, harmonized across different countries and regions. So, and there are a lot of innovation happening there, but also regulatory that we need to overcome. Um, I think we have maybe time for one more question. Okay, maybe you guys are a lot more thirsty than expected. So, I have a question about um, you know, these plots, and it's all about artificial technology, but emotions are very real. So how do you combine that artificial intelligence with things that are very tangible humans? Okay, that's a long story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. If you see the times this year and some of the, the care buds, the emotion is there with me. The, it's a very analog technology, analog watches with the position mapping, it is nothing, but it's creating some kind of the exquisite experience on top of the watch and the robots, why they do have why we are spending so much time to develop that eye motion? Uh, like like this. The yeah, we are saying that uh, okay, God created uh, nature and God created our human being, which is imperfect creature. We are, we are not perfect. So why why people are living together like this? We are social existence. So if there's a person who has a like a disability in the, the expressing their emotion or, or social capability, maybe he will not be living that, that well because he's not social existent. So we have to develop our relationship building capability as well as the good personality to be a good citizen. But AI resembles a human being, which is imperfect creature. So AI also needs like a relationship building capability and the personality in the future. We know that. But actually, we don't know that. Nowadays, AI is say, saying about the, what kind of the exact function we are doing, what kind of the functionality we take to have. But we see the future, and, and AI will have those kind of relationship capability and the personality as well. How we can make more personality based communication with the AI. That, that's a big task for the, the engineers like us. So we are heavily going into the more emotional communication with the AI. That, that's why we are heavily researching into the eye, eye movement and the gesture. You know, to have a communication with, with a human being, we need a gesture like this. But you know, to put a, a, like a manipulation type of the hand into the lower, the hand price itself will be much more expensive than the body of, or brain of the robots. So instead of that, we do have a projected hand. We can we can do many of the gestures with the hand, but in an you know, affordable price, if we do have a both of the like ambidextrous trust hand in, in there. Maybe lower price could be okay, fifteen thousand dollars for the the home use. That's ridiculous. How we can make it to be more affordable and how we can provide more emotional communication with the AI. 
that, that's a vision for us, and we we'll, we we'll, we'll be the leading position to make it happen. It's a long story. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you very much for coming to the event and also enjoy the rest of South by South. And I'd like to also thank the three panelists speaking today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.